Hey everyone, Irene Lyon here. Welcome to this video, to this channel, and to this entire world of nervous system health, healing trauma, and all things neuroplasticity. First off, if you are new here, please subscribe to this channel. Somewhere near this video is a little red thing. Subscribe. Also turn on notifications with the bell. That means when I put out these new videos, when I go live, when I post in the community, make sure you check that out. That's a fun area where I post quotes and reminders and all sorts of things. You will be notified when these things go out. For today, I want to talk about the biology of bedside manner. The biology of bedside manner. Now, bedside manner, if you don't know this term, it's usually used in medicine, medical situations. We'll say a doctor or a nurse has good bedside manner when they are nice, essentially, when they are able to connect with their patient and listen to their patient and listen to their fears and worries and they talk them through what's about to happen. This connection, this bedside manner, it goes into our biology, into our nervous system and physiology, and it allows us as the client or the patient to feel safer, to feel like we are in good hands, literally in good hands. And when we have that connection, um, not only does it soothe our nervous system, it gives us more opportunity to feel like we can ask questions. And I think, well, I don't think, I know, based on my own experience and hearing just people in my life, but also my clients and students, things don't always go so well with medical procedures when we're confused about what's happening, when we feel we can't speak up for needing something done a certain way or needing to slow something down. So I'll give you just a real quick example and then we'll get into the biology. Um, recently, I was um, having to have a surgery for a knee uh, trouble that I had. I had a little piece of something stuck in my knee joint. It's a very long story. I have a history of knee injuries. I talk about that on my website. You can check out my bio page. But earlier this year, something really big broke off in my joint due to the osteoarthritis in my joint. It got out, I went and had surgery, but when I went in to the prep area and I had to get an IV for fluids, um, I felt a little, a little panic in my system. And 20 years ago, A, I probably wouldn't need, would not have noticed this panic. It wouldn't have been an issue. I just would have not felt it and my system would have been trapping this traumatic survival stress or this worry. But now as a 45 year old who knows this work, I felt it bubble up because I'm not functionally frozen anymore. Um, and I, the nurse, I was talking to her and I said, oh, I'm feeling a little, I just said it, I'm feeling a little nervous and I know that's crazy, but just letting you know. And she, she, cause she was a good nurse. And I think most of them are when we give them an opportunity. She's like, oh, it's okay. We'll take it slow and I'll tell you exactly what I'm gonna do. And you know, just let me know. And that bit of me saying to her, I'm feeling a little edgy, engaged with her at a deeper level. And she then engaged with me. She was a bit more attentive to me and it was wonderful. And even if I think when I went into the, um, operating arena and I was connecting with the anesthesiologist. Again, I've had multiple surgeries when I was in my 20s and in my younger years. I have no memory of ever talking with the anesthesiologist, but I made a very, very specific point of engaging with him, even though he was behind me and I couldn't see him. Um, he spoke to me, he said, okay, we're gonna do this and I'm not gonna do anything until I tell you and I'll get your consent and all. It was very slow, it was very titrated. So he had wonderful bedside manner as did everybody in that, that situation. But what happens is this, so from a physiological level, when we connect with another mammal, another human, and we engage with eyes, voice, we hear them, we feel their presence, and their presence is fairly safe it calms us, it soothes us, and it's not just mental. This portion of our social engagement, it's also called the ventral vagal portion of the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system, its job is to slow things down. When we engage socially in this way, even if I can't see 
him, for example, it directly influences my heart through the pacemaker called the SA node and it calms it down. I'm essentially co-regulating with this guy, which then gives me self-regulation. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know this story all too well. When we're young and when we're little and when we're infants, we have to learn self-regulation via co-regulation. I've done many videos on these. I'll post a few, a select few below so that you can dive into these branches of what is called the polyvagal theory, how our nervous system is wired, how it is created when we're young. But essentially, bedside manner is good co-regulation. So one could say that when we're born into the world, we just need caregivers who have good bedside manner. It's as simple as that. So back to this idea of bedside manner. It can happen in a surgical arena. It could even happen, um, let's say, passerby, you're on the street, and someone hurts, has hurt themselves. And it's nothing significant or severe, but maybe they've tripped, maybe they've fallen, um, maybe someone looks like they're not doing so well. Again, you have to assess the safety of that situation, but by approaching and not being threatening and just speaking what you see, hey, are you okay? Can I help you? Um, just wanted to check. It looks like you're struggling a little bit, you know, no pressure, but just wanting to connect. Even that little bit of spark of social engagement with that stranger who might be struggling can give them enough connection to lower their heart rate and feel a little bit more attuned to what's happening. Maybe they do need help or maybe they're like, no, I'm okay, but thank you. And you keep walking and everything's fine. There is a story of um, Peter Levine, founder of Somatic Experiencing, someone who I've learned with and worked around in my worlds and in my trainings. In his book, I believe it was in an unspoken voice, he talks about how he had um, an accident where I think he was hit by a car. Um, I'm not sure of the details, but he was badly hurt um, while the ambulance was waiting to come, or while he was waiting for the ambulance to come, I should say, there was a good Samaritan, I believe, nearby on the sidewalk, and she saw this, and she sat with him and was with him while he waited for the ambulance. In his book, in the writing, he talks about how he believes that having that good Samaritan, having that good bedside manner with him while he waited probably prevented him from having post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of that, that accident. And so don't underestimate how these small little social interactions with either the people in your immediate life and the, with the people that you meet on the street, if you are a first responder, if you are in healthcare, if you are a teacher, right? So many instances where we can practice good bedside manner. And the other thing to know is that good bedside manner doesn't mean being smothering. It doesn't mean you know, running up to someone and making it such that you help them. You have to approach, have bound, have, you know, the sense of their boundary. Maybe they don't want help, right? And you have to respect that. Um, everyone's nervous system makeup is different. But back to this concept of the biology of bedside manner, it's pretty simple. It's just this, this, this concept that when we are feeling a little scared, a little frightened in say a medical situation, a surgical arena, at the doctor's office, et cetera, um, having that little bit of connection is important. Now, the other thing I'll mention, and I have already alluded, alluded to it, as an adult, do not be afraid to tell the medical practitioner, the acupuncturist, the dentist, that you're feeling a little freaked out. Let yourself say that. And by saying that, it, it, it breaks the ice. It lets them know that you are feeling your body and that you're respecting what's going on inside. And so far, my friends, when I have practiced this, when I've expressed this, the person on the other side is usually pretty receptive. It, it lets them feel your humanity. They empathize with you. And then it even slows them down, right? You're more likely to have a good interaction with, say, that teeth cleaning, dental hygienist, if you voiced that you're a little concerned, they'll probably go slower. They'll say what they're doing more. Trust me when I've said, I say, I've had some interactions with medical 
professionals, um, such people like dentists, dentists, hygienists, all of this. I'm thinking about a particular surgeon that made me cry once when I was in his office because he was so cold and just so to the point, right? Um, so of course there's instances where this might not work so well and the practitioner is just so shut, so shut down. Um, but when you can, if you can, advocate for yourself, let yourself know, let them know what you're feeling. Um, and for the most part, humans can listen. They slow down, they respect where you're at. Now, one last thing I will say, this video and wanting to talk about this simple aspect of bedside manner and the biology of it, it was um, inspired by something I saw on Instagram. And I'll post the link to this post, but it was, and I might even be able to put a little video of it up here. Um, it was a video of a dentist, I believe, and a little guy, he was under the age of five, and he was playing a little magic trick with him. And he was getting him to laugh. He was getting him to connect. He was making it such that the little one was feeling safe with him. And then from that, when he goes to get his teeth cleaned or whatever it was that he was there for, he feels trust in that other human, right? So wanted to just share this. There is a biological basis for why some people make us feel a little easier and others make us feel a little more crazy and a little more scared. But when you can advocate for what you're feeling, it will make that procedure, that surgery, that massage, whatever it might be, just a little more humane, connected, and you're not gonna spike your stress response in a way that just isn't good. And the final thing I will end with, one more thing, when we can go into these procedures with that connection, yes, we're more calm and our system, our cells, our immune system, it's gonna be more equipped to deal with what it has to deal with when that procedure, et cetera, occurs. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here and start watching this in your day-to-day -day life, how that social engagement can help spark up a safety situation that brings your nervous system down, takes us out of that fight, flight, freeze situation and lets us be just a little bit more calm, a little bit more collected and a little more connected to what is going on. Thank you so much for being here and we will see you next time.